I just wanted to do a, a I think it's going to be a short video today about uh, something that I saw on Democracy Now's headlines. I think it was yesterday, Wednesday. Um, and I found it really interesting. It was like a little clip from a interview that was done of Eric Holder, the Attorney General, otherwise known as the top law enforcement official in the United States. Now, I'm going to play the the question first. And this is the question the guy asked. He is a person who, uh, an American citizen, familiar with this country, um, and he brings a dimension um, because of that American familiarity that others do not. And where would you rank him or can you rank him? He would be on the same list with bin Laden. He's, he's up there. I don't know whether he's one, two, three, four, I, I don't know, but he's certainly on the list of the people who uh, worry me the most. Does the U.S. have a preference in terms of our Lockheed? dead, captured, or prosecuted. So what I really wanted you to notice about that question was the embedded assumptions in it. Namely that he's not asking Eric Holder whether any of these forms of getting Alalaki are right or wrong. I mean, it's, it's a, an embedded assumption of the question that all of these are okay. So what he's asking Holder at this point is merely whether or not he has a specific preference for one of these methods over the others. Now, let, let's hear Holder's response because I think it's, it's really telling. Well, we certainly want to neutralize him um, and we will do whatever we can um, in order to do that. Well, there you go. There you have the top law enforcement official of the United States not expressing a preference for any of the three options. Um, and I think this is very significant. It speaks to Holder's whole way of kind of perceiving the world. Because, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a significant thing that he does not see a difference here. And I'll, and I'll talk about that a little bit more later in terms of, like, you know, eventual consequences for it. But on the face of it, I mean, I think if nothing else, it bespeaks an enormous lack of respect for the legitimizing aspect of prosecution over assassination. I mean... Honestly, why bother to have trials at all? Seriously, why, why bother? I mean, there are certainly cases in which trials serve to undermine justice. I mean, there are certainly cases where people that we're pretty certain are guilty are set free. So, because that can happen... Why would we go through trials? Why not just, like, you know, if we know someone is guilty, know someone is guilty, why don't we just kill them? Or incarcerate them, or levy whatever, you know, penalty we want. So, we know it has these flaws. We know that, um, you know, it occasionally makes mistakes. So, why bother? Why bother with it at all? Well, I think there are two reasons. One, I think you have an improved result, and the improved result is because of a diffusion of responsibility for a decision. Generally speaking, you know, if you have more people involved, you have better chances that, like, all the, the um, I's are dotted and the T's crossed, you know, in terms of legal action. But there's a wider question, a deep, more fundamental one, about the legitimizing function of trials at all. And, and this is something that I, I think is kind of going away in our society, where we don't even understand basic things like, you know, how the role of trials in our society and how it legitimizes our government. So... <laughs> To me, these things are fairly fundamental, but I mean, I, th I guess they, they're things that I feel need to be brought up again in the sense that, you know, if Eric Holder is making comments like this, I think ideas like that are actually in play. The second big problem comes in the sense that, let's carry this lack of a preference forward. 
Um, if there really isn't any difference between assassination and prosecution, then in, in, in terms of like being a preferred thing to do, well, then one of them is clearly easier than the other. I mean, there are a lot of there's a lot of mess, a lot of bother, a lot of difficulty associated with bringing a person to trial, you know, dealing with their lawyer, dealing with the legal system, getting your case together, assembling facts, dealing with, uh, you know, motions in court, the judge, etc., you know, potential fallout in, 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 in the news media, etc. There's a lot of bother that assassination saves you. So, without a, a, a deep underlying preference for one option over another, I think it's fairly clear which one then becomes the more desirable option. I mean, if you don't have any other reason to prefer one over the other, well, assassination sure is easier. <laughs> You know, no extradition, no judges, no lawyers, no motions, no, you know, legal wrangling. No, pow, it's over. <laughs> See, this is why this stuff is so important. And it, it just deeply concerns me that, for whatever reason, I mean, I, I imagine Holder's got, maybe he's got some strategic reason, or maybe he really doesn't give a shit. Maybe he doesn't have any kind of preference. But whatever it is, I mean, I, I think it's, it's tragic that the, the, clear question, the clear answer to the question is not, of course we prefer prosecution. Of course we would like prefer to have him in a court of law make our case, show the quality of American justice. If we are forced into a position where we think that that is impossible, we may have to entertain the notion that we may have to kill him. And then maybe go even on a, like a poetic defense of like why that needs to be necessary. But to not even say, you know, of course we prefer prosecution. Of course that is the more desirable outcome. I mean, how soul-fucking-dead are we? Anyway, it's been Zach Elliott, and of course you can always feel free to argue. <laughs> Oh, and I guess uh, Christmas is coming, so Merry freaking Christmas. <laughs> Take care, everyone.